Good day, my name is Elfrida Jonk. I'm the Client Portfolio Manager for Alfinity Investment Management. Today, we are lucky enough to speak to Ty Archibald, one of our uh, analysts in the global fund, all the way from the USA. So Ty, welcome and tell us why are you in the US and who are you seeing? Thanks, Elfrida. So I'm in Scottsdale in Arizona. I'm attending the UBS Technology and AI Conference. And as the name suggests, there's a lot of companies here that span the technology universe. Uh, there's over 300 companies and over four days, I'll be meeting personally with over 20 of them. And there's a wide array from you know, different sectors all the way from your traditional AI companies that you would expect through to retailers that are implementing technology and AI into their businesses. So it just goes to show how broad ranging and, and wide reaching technology is becoming. Yes, I'm sure you're going to hear AI a few times over the four days. So um, with all those companies and everyone saying potentially something different, are there any sort of overarching broader themes that you've picked up so far? Yeah, there's definitely a couple key themes. Um, I think first and foremost is talking about AI is easy to do and implementing it is is much harder. And there's just a natural mm -hmm. limit on the resources in the world in terms of the number of people that have the expertise to really implement this for businesses. So I think what that means is it'll be the bigger companies with the bigger balance sheets, the more money to invest that will really benefit from this, at least at the beginning. And, mm -hmm. and I think we can see that so far, but I think that's that's also a trend that will play out to come. I think also what we notice is that there's low hanging fruit and it, it's mainly focused around business efficiencies to begin with. We're not mm -hmm. seeing a lot on the, the product or revenue generation side yet, but it's more internally focused and generating efficiencies and, and cost cutting to begin with. Mm. And talking about efficiencies, uh, we can't have a conversation at the moment without bringing in Trump and all his new policies and initiatives, of which one is, of course, Elon Musk's Department of Efficiency. So tell us, did that come up at, at the conference and what's the overarching sort of concern or views around that? Yeah, you're right. The Doge um, has <laughs> been mentioned quite a bit and really... For a couple of reasons, I guess investors would have been trying to get a gauge of you know, potential companies' exposure to federal budgets. But also, I think a key learning is that when it's based around efficiencies, it's not a threat for everyone. There's companies out there that provide software and tools and products into government agencies and, and all companies that help drive efficiencies. So there's a couple mm -hmm. of companies in particular, um, and I call out you know, ServiceNow on, on this front, um, that, you know, are really leaning, leaning into this, seeing it as a, a big opportunity. You know, if there's going to be efficiencies, they're the ones that are going to help it happen. Absolutely. So if we uh, pivot a little bit to the other theme that's been discussed of late within the AI trade is this sort of idea that we are moving on from just at the front end, the enablers and the infrastructure players to those that can actually deliver the software and services on top of that and those that can generate revenue from AI. Do you have some examples of what you've heard so far? How far reaching is that? How many companies are actually making money out of AI at this point? Yeah, I think you're right. There's been a lot of talk about it. And what I would say is there's probably only a couple of companies or a handful in the world that have real AI related products in the market. Microsoft mm -hmm. is a good example with their co-pilot product um, and ServiceNow, which I just mentioned, is another example. And they're really just automating some, you know, manual tasks, pre-filling forms and things mm -hmm. like that. But what I would say is that it's still very early on. And another theme that's coming through is they're still working through how to monetize these new products and tools effectively with customers. So it's definitely coming. The big software players are seeing it, but it's still early days and there's still limited products in the market today. So we are very well positioned then across our global funds, given that those are the two big software names that we currently invest in. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely coming away feeling positive on our positioning in ServiceNow and Microsoft particularly. I think they're at the forefront of the change. As I said, they're you know, larger companies, bigger balance sheets to invest. They're the ones that are seeing customer demand and actually have products in the market, although they're still working through ServiceNow, particularly some monetization 
the demand is definitely there and they see a great opportunity. So feeling pretty good about that. And before I let you go, with, was there any one name that was in, of particular interest to you across those 300 companies that you've heard from uh, up to now? Yeah, it's a tough question to, to nail just one. Um, but one that stood out to me is a vertically integrated software player in the US named Tyler Technologies. Uh, it's a smaller type company, but it serves local municipalities in the US and it helps them function. Uh, it can have everything from an ERP system to helping their run, them run their local ambulance centre to the courts and justice systems. And talking about the, the DOGE or the Department of Government Efficiency, they also see that as a huge opportunity. Um, they're going through a cloud transition, which is seeing their revenue accelerate. And then on top of that, if there's efficiencies to be made in at the federal level or at any type of, um, I guess, state or local government level, they expect to be beneficiaries from that. So that was pretty interesting. Very well. Well, thank you so much, Star. I know it's late, so uh, I'll let you go. Good luck with the rest of your trip. And um, thank you for everyone who's listening. For more information from Ty and the team, please visit us on alfinity.com.au. Thank you. Thanks, Alfreda.